So for those that are new here, you know, how did I come up with AR Perspective? Well, that that goes back um, some years and whatnot. But it's not really about the name. It's actually really about the concept of what this is. This is once you have decided that that there's something else that's going on within the confines of this perception, of your perception, of our perception. What is that? You know, like the infamous <laughs> lines out of the Matrix. You know, do we know what it is? <laughs> you know, uh, and in realizing, like, after having certain experiences, that there's something more to what we see. You know, if you have certain experiences that prove to you, like, okay, there's something else just happening here, or that just me. You know, obviously there's something else that's going on, right? Did you just see something or you just experience something that you really can't explain? Well, how the heck did that really happen? If this place isn't something more than what we have been conditioned to believe that it is, right? So, I guess you, everybody goes down their road to a higher perception um, different ways, of course, because we are living our own particular individual lives. So, within my confines, it's, I mean, it has a lot to do with everything. Like, uh, like I always say, everything leading up to the particular moments is how you get there, you know, everything. So, you know, that, that that's just how it goes. But, it depends on, you know, for me, different traumas and stuff like that. And seeing the traumas. Like, it's really about living through, you know, these traumas and coming back and, like, brushing your shoulders off. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get right there. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's all about love, right? And it's, it's just getting out of that fear-based mindset and that lack mentality and all the stuff that keeps us down. And, and sad, you know, and, um, and always, and, and not, not searching for something more. And what I like to do and what I tell. Yeah, you know, it's about searching for something more because there has to be more there. There's something more here. And different other things just doesn't make sense. How come, you know, people, and I don't like to use the phrase, like, you know, looking at other people and stuff like that, but. You know, we all generally have known the the lore of uh, of Santa Claus. Okay, well, after breaking this down a little bit, okay, well, Santa Claus, well, okay, whatever it is, was told to you by your your parents, or you're lucky enough to have one, or you knew about the story from watching other people's parents and kids growing up getting gifts around this time. It's all over the news, it's all over the markets, it's all over everything, right? Okay, well, you find out at some point in time that there is no person that comes down the chimney, right? We all know this. Right? So you have to accept that first rejection. You know, that there is no Santa Claus. Well, and when that was, I, when I was breaking that down, I was like, okay. Well, that's a traumatic experience for a lot of people. We talk about that. Like, what? Well, no Santa Claus? Well, you know, it's not that traumatic when you're a kid because when you really are old enough and you found out, it's like, okay, well, on to the next thing. You're out of that already. But the whole thing is, like, when you find out as a really kid, it's more like, okay, well, that was the first lie that's really told to you. You just got a, a big lie. You've been living this lie for, like, about, about four years of what you know of. Your four years of your life. Five years maybe six you shouldn't know about your Santa Claus after six you shouldn't be thinking you should know your parents getting you some gifts you know what I'm saying if you were six years old still thinking there's some white dude coming down your chimney you you, you got problems you arrested developed you know you six years old thinking that you six year olds y'all better know there ain't no Saint Nick coming down your chimney giving you no race cars okay now you five, that's a that's a that's a different story. You still got your Oshkosh bagashes. But you know, whatever. I think I found out when I was four or five something. I was like I was four, but what? I was like, what's this stuff? <laughs> you know. But
but it's like it's, it's good because we got out of school. But that lie was told to you. Who told it to you? Your parents told it to you. Wow. So what does that do? Let's break it down. What is that? What does that do? You know, your parents just lied to you, broke your freaking heart as a five-year-old, and they're laughing at you. Not only that, but if you have any siblings, they're laughing at you too. Everybody's laughing at the dummy that believed in the Santa Claus. <laughs> Makes you feel pretty upset, don't it? So what are you going to do? Well, every day you got to go to school. You still got to go to church. So your parents just lied to you. Wow. Well, they're lying to you. Well, who can you trust? You probably trust your teachers. And you probably trust your church people. So you go into institutionalization of, of school, the indoctrination program. And you get the, the ability to get indoctrinated further into a religion. And they won't lie to you. You know? In fact, they make sure you keep your household kind of intact. Like, you know, hey, you know, don't commit adultery. You know, honor thy father and mother. And all that stuff. But then ultimately, you know how that all ends. <laughs> so, fast forward. A bunch of more trauma that we'll probably talk about at some point in time. And you realize at some point if you want to really accomplish anything. If you really want to accomplish anything, you have to accept to reject what you thought was true. That's the only way. <laughs>